Hello and welcome to my video of how I assembled my 12 string Telecaster electric guitar. Basically I've wanted a 12 string electric guitar for quite a while now and I've tried a couple which are out there such as the uh, the Dan Electro 12 string and the uh, Rickenbacker 330 12 and although I, I think that they look and sound very nice uh, I didn't really think that they felt that comfortable to play so I decided to uh, take on this project of uh, putting a 12 string Telecaster together. Now the story with this guitar is that a few months ago I acquired a Mexican standard Telecaster for a very good price and I originally um, considered doing the uh, 12 string neck conversion which you can, uh, which is a popular option for quite a few people which involves uh, drilling out another six holes in the headstock of the guitar and incorporating six machine heads into there as well but in the end I decided against that because I thought that it would still feel rather cramped having 12 strings on a standard Telecaster neck so I decided to uh, remove the Mexican neck from the guitar and sell it separately to uh, offset the cost of a Warmoth neck which I purchased from Warmoth.com I think I'm pronouncing that properly <laughs> now you may be able to tell that this uh, this Warmoth neck has a, um, a wider fretboard than the standard Telecaster neck it's also um, what I would call a more shallow profile it, uh, it doesn't feel as, as, as thick at the back although it has a, a wider fretboard I've also gone for the option of uh, the 60s style vintage fret wire which is just something I find a little bit more comfortable it's down to personal preference you do get a few options to choose from on the Warmoth website so uh, moving further up um, when the neck initially arrived from Warmoth it was uh, very plain in that uh, it was basically cut uh, round at the top of the guitar. Uh, you may be able to tell that I've had the uh, the front face of the headstock sprayed a candy apple red metallic colour, and I just think that that uh, colour coordinates nicely with the body of the guitar. And uh, moving on to the machine heads, I decided to go for the uh, vintage Cluson style machine heads. The main reason being that they are um, rather light in machine head terms and especially when you consider putting uh, 12 machine heads at the top of a guitar you do risk making it uh, quite heavy for instance if you were to use the, uh, the Fender standard machine heads. If you are thinking about uh, undertaking this project yourself you would need to uh, purchase a right and a left handed set as you can see it's just to fit on either end of the guitar otherwise you would have one set kind of upside down from the other so looking back at the front face of the guitar the uh, you may notice that the um, the nut is set out like a Rickenbacker 12 string in that it has the uh, the lower drone string, as I would call it, first before the octave string, second. Again, that's down to personal preference. On most twelve strings, you tend to find that it will have the octave string as the first string you would hit, and the uh, the drone string second. I just think it sounds slightly different in that it adds a little bit more. Uh, more of a jangly sound which is something which I quite like the um, the nut itself is made from a synthetic ivory which is uh, called Tusk on the uh, Warmoth website that's T-U-S-Q you do get a variety of, uh, of nut options on the Warmoth site if you were to uh, go down that route So, looking further down the guitar, um, I also went for the option of the 
clay dot inlays which were uh, an idea which um well i don't know if fender came up with but they certainly used on quite a few guitars uh up until the 60s and 70s i think before they switched to uh other kind of um, synthetic inlays like Mother of Pearl and things like that. So as for the body itself, I did decide to stick with the uh, the stock Mexican pickups. Uh, I think they sound absolutely fine. They're not something I would uh, I would spend money on upgrading as such. So I've left them as they are. Uh, moving further down, uh, you may be wondering how. Uh, have incorporated 12 strings at the bridge of the guitar. You can uh, you can buy a 12 string Goto bridge, I think I'm pronouncing that properly, um, in that you can uh, intonate the height of each string. Sorry, intonate and uh, alter the height of each string. But um, the way the Goto make the bridges they have the octave string first, uh, so you wouldn't be able to um, to set the uh, the guitar out like this on a goto bridge. So instead, I had um, I had some uh, saddles custom made by a guy in America called Mark Rutters, who makes a lot of their Fender style hardware. And on each barrel, if you look closely, you can see that. Uh, there are two strings on either side of each of the uh, of the saddles there. And I thought that might initially be a bit of a nightmare in terms of uh, adjusting string height and intonation, but it's as it's come out surprisingly well. Really, the, the the intonation's fine and the string height's fine. There aren't any buzzes on the neck as such, but I'll explain a little bit about that in a minute. So to accommodate the extra six strings, um, I had to. Uh, place an extra six holes in the bottom lip of the bridge they were done with a, a 1.5 millimeter drill bit and then basically the string gets pushed through the bottom lip of the bridge and it just sits in place in the gap and it won't move string end you can see the colors on them there In terms of uh, the neck itself, as you can probably imagine, 12 strings does create quite a bit of tension on a guitar neck, so I did have to adjust the truss rod. It was originally bored when I first tuned the guitar up to pitch, uh, and the headstring was rather far forward. So one of the drawbacks with this style of neck is that you do have to remove the neck from the body <clears throat> in order to adjust the truss rod. So I took the strings off, um, removed the neck, gave it a good turn on the truss rod and uh, placed it back on. If you were to uh, adjust the truss rod, as with any guitar truss rod, always be careful to do this in, in small increments rather than big turns because uh, you do read horror stories online of, uh, of people bending them too far and, and breaking the truss rod. When, um, I think it can be quite costly to, uh, to repair that. Also, another of the options with the Warmoth neck is that once you've uh, adjusted the uh, the truss rod within the neck itself, underneath here, as per normal Telecasters, there is a, a, a fine adjustment on the side, if you can see there. And that's an, basically an Allen bolt, which uh, clasps a mechanism together on the inside of the neck which raises the height of the uh, the truss rod it just gives you a little bit more to play with so that's the uh, that's my video of how i put the telecaster together i hope i haven't bored you too much and uh, thanks for listening i will uh, do a sound test on the guitar shortly also but uh, thank you very much bye